It is April 21st, I think. Yes, it is April 21st. That means it's the day that I fell in love with Hope. Launches for pre-order with Simon & Schuster. We're gonna do this chronologically because I don't know any other way to organize this. Saying I've been a writer since I can remember is very misleading. What I have been ever since I can remember is a storyteller. I've had an online presence as an author for about a year now. I started making videos about my writing journey and what I was doing and I think people were like, oh, that's cool. And so they followed me and, and, and now we're here. I fell in love with Hope as a fictitious novel inspired by real life experiences and observations. It's most definitely an introspective type of novel. It is my first of many, hopefully. The idea originated from my teenage years and I wrote the book when I was 19. I self-published I Fell In Love With Hope August 1st, 2022. In the few months before it was acquired by a publisher, it sold over 70,000 copies on Amazon. I'd always intended to self-publish I Fell In Love With Hope just because it was super personal, so I didn't want editorial management. Also, it's, it's, it was I knew it wasn't gonna be an easy story to sell to anyone. There's a lot of intersectionality in terms of representation, which um, publishers historically do not like. You know, if you're gonna write a gay story, it has to be a gay story. If you're gonna write a story about sick kids, it has to be about sick kids. If you're gonna write a story about people of color, it has to be a story about people of color. Considering that the characters in my book are all three of those, and adding on top of that a writing style that doesn't really fit into young adult or adult, that, 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 that wasn't gonna go well for me and it didn't at first. I thought what the hell and I kind of queried to agents and I did get rejected by every single one of them. But that didn't discourage me because a lot of people were anticipating the story and I wasn't gonna keep them waiting. I had an artist friend of mine design the cover with me, I did the editing, I copyrighted it and did all that stuff myself and then when I self-published it, like I said, it ended up actually being pretty successful. Like most things, what determines a book's success, especially early on, is, is definitely the marketing. You can write the greatest book in the world but if it doesn't have enough word of mouth going for it or enough marketing going for it It's not gonna sell a lot especially in the beginning I was aware of that so I sent the book to a lot of content creators that I knew and admired and if they liked the book They made content about it and if they didn't like it then they didn't You're probably wondering what happened uh, after I published it and it became successful and stuff Well actually something happened beforehand I published it August 1st of 2022 and August 3rd of 2022, um, I got a publishing author from Penguin Random House, which is the biggest publisher in the world. It was one of their English imprints in, in the UK. What I assume happened is that one of the editors on their teams like saw some of the content I was making before I published the book, then I published it, they bought it, read it, and were like, oh, we can publish this. So yeah, I got the author, but I, I, I didn't want to take it because I, I didn't want to get um, taken advantage of. Not implying that they were, but, but everybody knows that that happens in artistic and media industries. And and I knew that if I was getting an offer this early, that meant that there were gonna be more to come. So for the first month that the book was published, I made a lot of marketing content and then I stopped and I let it kind of simmer and eventually word of mouth took over and that's when I started getting um, a rise in sales because you know people were talking to each other about the book and they were posting about the book and then it sort of became its own project that I could just let go of. Somebody even made a webtoon of it, which is fucking cool. So I again reached out to an agent She's actually my manager now, and she sent the book to a lot of people, one of which was a literary agent friend of hers who is now my agent. I work with the both of them and they're very, very good at their jobs. They helped me sort of edit the book a little bit so that it would appeal more to publishers, especially from the first chapter and onward. They helped me essentially make a pitch and taught me so much about the publishing industry that I had no idea about. So we sent it out and then we got publishing offers. So we sent it out and then we got offers from publishers. We ended up signing with Emily Bessler who works uh, with Simon Schuster in the imprint Atria. She also has her own imprint called Emily Bessler Books. There's a big truck outside. Emily is like the an angel sent from above that helped me like fix everything as well as eliminate my imposter syndrome. I was literally on call with her and I was like, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I just did a really good job marketing and I'm actually like a really shitty writer. And she said like super simply, um, if I didn't like your book, I wouldn't have bought it. Oh well damn, okay, thanks. <laughs> Emily's edited books like Anatomy of Scandal, um, the U books, which the U series on Netflix is based off of. By the way, when I found out that she edited those books, which I did not know even after I signed with her, I had a full fangirl moment. Atria also publishes books like uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid, Frederick Beckman in the US, I believe. Um, Colleen Hoover, all those authors. This is the new version of I Fell In Love With Hope. So the process signing with a publisher um, was, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, like, really stressful. Um, because at the end of the day, the decision falls on you, the author, even if you are managed, represented, whatever, you know, it falls on you to make the decision and you have to decide whether to trust your gut, trust your agent, trust your manager, you have to 
put a lot of trust onto a lot of different people, something that you put a lot of work and your whole life into sometimes. Um, I've been expeditiously lucky. Not only did I get the best team I can think of, but I also got like the best publishers I could think of, and so many people support me and are behind me on this, and sometimes I'm really annoying, so I really appreciate that. A lot of people are like, oh my god, you're so authentic, and yeah, I am, but I'm also really stupid, and I will say things that I'm not allowed to say it. I literally almost like dropped the news like a month early that we were publishing with them. If my publisher's watching this, I almost did it, but I didn't. I'd like that to be on record. Somebody commented once that I'm like the Tom Holland of the author universe. Once I chose Simon Schuster, we signed everything. I got the manuscript over to my editor, Emily, and she edited everything. And then her and I corresponded back and forth to see the edits we would keep, what we wouldn't keep, what we would add to basically just make the book the best version of the book it could be. Then when we were happy with that version, it went on to pre-production and production, which is completely out of my hands. We got the new cover. It's so pretty. Then I corresponded with the whole team, including um, the publicist, the people who are head of marketing, social media, interns, all. Uh, super stressful, but also really, really fun. And now we're here, eight months later, uh, August, September, nine, nine months later, gestation period. I always compare writing it being a gestation period because it takes me about nine months to write a book. Anyway, here I am nine months later and we're announcing the, the republication of I Fell in Love with Hope. You can pre-order it for the US and the UK right now. I put the links um, somewhere, but usually when I make YouTube videos, they always have a point because YouTube videos are hard to make. So if I'm gonna make one, it's gonna have a purpose. I'm 21 and I've gotten further in my career than I thought I ever would. And of course there's a part of me that's terrified that I'll never know if that's because I'm a good writer or because I had the right support or because I had the luck or if it was all three. But I think it really says something that from where I started doing everything all by myself nine months ago, that now I'm here and with an army of people supporting me. Yeah, I know it sounds so fucking savvy, but it's true. <laughs> Who am I most grateful for? Well, like, all, the, all the readers, obviously. Well, you know, I, okay, I, I can kiss up to my publisher and I, I am very grateful for my publisher, but it is at the end of the day, it's... I'm gonna cry if I keep talking, is that what you want? Uh, there's a new chapter of Blue Lock, I'm gonna go read it. You can pre-order this whenever you want. <laughs>